Dwayne Romero. I am a, a here in Aspen at the Aspen School District. I'm a, a current school board member and we're hosting obviously the college fair. So appreciate everyone participating. Uh, as it relates to military academies, I'm a West Point class of 87, served several years in the army uh, and then have settled here in the uh, Western Colorado area here in Aspen. And I'm gonna ask well, today, we have, as I said, two presenters, two um, uh, representatives for the two service academies that we wanna talk about, Naval Academy, as well as uh, uh, West Point, United States Military Academy at West Point. And so, if I may, we're going to have um, Lieutenant Colonel Bob O'Rourke, Naval Academy is 67, joining us. He's going to represent and give a quick overview for, um, you know, the Naval Academy and in just general kind of the opportunities there. Bob has a few slides he might be able to use. Antonia, are you, I believe it's Captain, Captain Antonio Seffer. Is uh, yes, yes, correct. Well done. Well done. I'll let you, obviously I'll let you do an intro as well. It looks like you have some slides per, perhaps to maybe work through if you want to. Okay. Save about, you know, do that for 50 to 20 minutes, Amber, and then we'll um, kind of open it up for Q&A for the audience and hopefully a few more folks join us here today and uh, we'll roll from there. So as it relates to pr presentations, um, is it okay if I ask Bob to start? He just already, we already kind of looked at his slides a little bit. So Bob, if you may, if you will, please, are you sir. Sure, are, are you sure? Are you sure you don't want youth and beauty to go first? All right. I mean, so <laughs> he's pivoting. He's pivoting. And he's right. The, the Navy's good about that. He's a Marine Corps guy, so he knows how to play tactical. Uh, I love it. Uh, okay. So super. Antonia, are you are you you're prepared to give us an intro and then also provide a little presentation on West Point? Uh, sure. Yeah, I can do that. Thanks so much. Let's see if I can pull my slides up one second. Yeah. While she's doing that, Amber, can uh, can you tell us where you're from? I'm from Norwood, Colorado. Oh, cool! Excellent. And what grade? What high school are you attending? And what grade are you in? I'm at Norwood High School, and I'm a freshman. Awesome! Really appreciate you joining. Okay. Can uh, everyone see my slides? Sure can. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, to give a little background on myself. Uh, so my name is uh, Captain Antonia Pfeffer. I'm a West Point grad class of 2013. Um, so it's been a few years now, but not too many years. Um, and uh, during my time there, I was an electrical engineering major, um, graduated, I had the chance to go to graduate school after, um, and went straight into the cyber core from there. Um, so I recently, earlier this year, uh, transferred from active duty to the reserves. So um, did quite a few things in my time and excited to talk to some folks today about West Point. Okay. Hey, Tony, uh, so may, I ask you, may I ask you a quick question? I sure. hate to because I'll forget. <laughs> uh, at West Point, do you, do you happen to know uh, Captain Maggie Smith up there who's uh, teaching up there now? Uh, the name sounds familiar, but I can't think of exactly who. But the she's, name does she's sound She's a friend familiar. of mine, yeah. Okay. She's a friend of mine. I had, I had her on an Outward Bound Veterans course a okay, years ago. Cool. <laughs> Long distance runner. And anyway, she's super. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, no, no problem at all. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, so I won't kind of get into too many of the specifics, but uh, you know, West Point has a pretty prestigious history. Uh, a lot of leaders, including two uh, U.S. presidents um, and leaders across government, industry, academia, sports, you name it. Um, we have prominent graduates uh, representing all of those fields. Uh, so the mission here at West Point is to educate, train, and inspire the Corps of Cadets. Um, and basically, we're trying to cre uh, create commission leaders of character um, who really uphold our values. And uh, uh, at West Point, we have Deuter Honor Country is the cadet motto. Uh, duty on our country is a cadet motto. So we really strive to represent that in everything we do um, in every aspect of life, uh, and especially when serving the nation as a United States Army officer. Um, so approaching West Point, we try to go and cover the whole person. Uh, we don't just want to create uh, leaders who are good militarily or good academically. Um, we really wanna um, round out and fulfill uh, every aspect of of character. So academic, military, physical, leadership, as well as honor and respect is another big one. Um, while at West Point, even through the application process through graduation, um, there's a pretty robust uh, support system 
uh, including when you're applying, there's the field force, um, which include representatives like myself um, who go and help candidates as they apply in all the way into acceptance. Um, once you become a cadet, there's a sponsorship program um, to try to give you a little bit of that home away from home um, and you know, family where you can go and kind of relax um, and really kind of escape every once in a while, which is always good. Uh, there's also parents clubs um, for your parents to get involved and they really like to do a lot to support cadets. Um, and even after graduation, you can join the West Point Society Association of Graduates and you're always kind of connected and can always find ways to give back um, and be involved. Uh, so these are institutional rankings. Um, this one is a little bit dated. I don't know if my Navy counterpart will <laughs> bring it up that uh, some of the things shifted around this year, but we've consistently been um, ranked in the top um, for undergraduate colleges, public colleges, even within certain curriculums, engineering, liberal arts. Um, so pretty much no matter what you study, what you're kind of interested in, uh, West Point is ranked pretty high up there. Uh, this is just a look at some of our academic majors. I believe we have 47 academic majors, um, but it covers the spectrum if you're interested in politics, if you're interested in liberal arts programs, hard sciences. Uh, I myself was an engineering major. So if you're interested in any of those STEM kind of fields, um, mm. we have majors that really appeal to everybody. Um, and you can definitely find something that you're interested in at West Point. And all the programs are pretty nationally recognized as being uh, no, amongst the highest rated in the country. Uh, so just to give you a quick overview of militarily, um, what you can expect to go through as a cadet. Uh, so your freshman year, which we call plebes, um, you'll really start six weeks before the academic year um, by going to cadet basic training. And that's where you really get an introduction into the military and army life. Uh, you in process, you get your uniforms, you learn basic things like basic marksmanship, um, how to do some land navigation and not be lost in the woods, <laughs> which is a learning process. Um, you do physical training, you get prepared physically um, to be successful during the academic year, uh, and as well as instilling some of those values in army culture. Um, and then at the conclusion of those six weeks, you get formally accepted uh, into the Corps of Cadets. Um, so you transition from new cadet to actual plead. Uh, and you get a little bit more privileges, not many, but the first year uh, is really where they're trying to instill discipline into you. Um, and where you learn how to follow rather uh, when later years you learn how to lead. Um, so, so your sophomore year, your yearling year, yearling year um, during the summer, you'll attend four week cadet field training. Um, that's where you learn some more advanced topics, uh, mountain operations, uh, you do a water confidence um, course, obstacle course. Uh, <laughs> geez, sorry. Uh, and then you also do a concluding field training exercise. Um, and that's just one aspect of your summer. You also have different opportunities and uh, time in your summer to do a few other things, which I'll cover a little bit later in the slides. Your junior year, your cow year, um, is where you'll do your leadership detail. So that's the first time you'll really kind of be in front of other cadets and learning to lead. Um, there's a few different um, things that you can be assigned to during that time. Uh, you also do a two week cadet leader development training. Um, where you learn to do um, some different things tactically um, and perform some different maneuvers. Uh, and finally, your senior year, your first year, um, that's where you really, um, it's kind of a trial run for being an officer. You really take charge, you'll be in charge of an actual event and exercise. Um, and if you haven't done your two week cadet leader development training, you'll have time to do that as well. Uh, so physical development, um, there's a few different classes you take to help uh, physically develop you during your time at West Point, your freshman year, um, you'll take boxing. Um, if you're a male or female, you'll take a boxing class. Uh, you also take military movement, um, which is also called gymnastics, but you learn different ways of uh, maneuvering yourself physically and, and um, how to really uh, embrace and embody fitness. Uh, and every year you'll also take the army physical fitness test, um, which is something that you'll do in the actual army um, and just really kind of prepared you for that. So you'll do that twice a year. Your sophomore year, um, you take different fitness classes. It really kind of depends on your interest. That's where you can kind of start to branch out um, and take different sports or different things that interest you. For example, uh, I'm from Texas. So I've never really seen snow before, but I took skiing. Um, and so I learned to ski um, and survived. So there's a lot of interesting things that you can do. Uh, you can also take uh, survival swimming, uh, which is where you learn not only to swim if you don't already know how, um, but how to uh, swim in adverse conditions and really 
go through a swimming obstacle course and um, so it's a lot of fun. It can be a lot of fun. Uh, finally, you'll also um, go through the indoor obstacle course, um, which is something every cadet must pass to graduate. Uh, if you haven't seen a video of it, there's videos on YouTube. Uh, it's pretty involved, but it's a pretty cool accomplishment once you completed it. Um, and really can kind of do those spread throughout those last three years. Uh, looking at other things that cadets do, it's not all just kind of uh, training and very intense things. Uh, there's also opportunities um, that you can experience at uh, other colleges, such as taking a semester abroad program. Um, you can study a language and culture in various countries, China, Germany, Russia, um, all over really. Um, we have a lot of programs with other countries and other military academies where you can spend a semester abroad. Uh, there's also different developmental programs. Um, for example, there's uh, instead of just military um, outreach, we can go to other military schools. Um, and I know they send some people to kind of a German military um, orienteering course and things like that. So you can do cool military stuff, but you can also do cool academic things if academics is more um, your focus. So you can go out and do a mini internship for three to six weeks um, with different organizations. Um, for example, as a cadet, uh, I had the chance to go do a, a mini internship uh, in London, England, um, working with Boeing. Uh, and that was pretty cool just to see um, the other aspect of industry and how they do it and go to a cool place in there as well. Uh, they also have internships that you can do with federal agencies here in the United States um, and other private companies um, such as iRobot, um, Lockheed Martin, Verizon, other companies like that. Uh, so just to look at the evaluation process, um, when you're applying, we do look at academics, leadership, as well as the candidate fitness assessment, which is the physical test. Um, and so academics look at your high school rank, um, as well as your SAT and, or ACT, depending on what you take. Um, I will note that now they do require the SAT essay or the ACT writing. Um, and finally, your upload your transcript, your academic transcript at the end. Uh, leadership wise, um, it's important to have some extracurricular activities to show your well-roundedness, um, including um, if you're doing boys or girls state, if you do any kind of girl or boy scouts, um, evaluations from school officials and any athletics, especially if you're a captain of a team or anything like that. Uh, finally, the candidate, candidate fitness assessment um, is a test of six different events that you can do, um, which are required. You have to meet a minimum score in order to get accepted. Um, and a few different people um, can kind of grade you on that. Um, and I'll cover that uh, if any questions come up. Another big aspect of it is medical qualification. Um, so I would advise you to do this as early as possible um, in order to complete it. Um, you have to pass the qualifying medical exam. And even if some things come up, um, some things are waiverable. So the earlier you get started and are able to complete it, the better, just because it can become a longer process. Um, and that's the Donberg process. Uh, finally, um, to be admitted, you also need a nomination. There are a few different routes you can go to get a nomination. One is congressional, um, so you can get it by your local member of Congress. Um, each one is authorized five cadet appointments at any one time. Um, you can also get one from your local senator for your state. Um, and there are also limited vice presidential uh, nominations um, that can come from the United States at large. Uh, there are also a few service connected ways you can obtain a nomination. For example, if your parents are um, retired military, did their full kind of 20 years uh, career military, you can get a presidential nomination that way. Those are limited to 100 nominations. Uh, if you're coming from the regular army or the reserve, um, there are nominations set aside for those personnel. Um, if you're coming from an ROTC or JROTC school, um, that is an honor unit with distinction. Uh, there are 20 nominations reserved um, for students that way, as well as some nominations for um, if you're the son or daughter of a deceased or disabled veteran um, or of a Medal of Honor award. <laughs> okay. And that uh, concludes my brief. Um, so I'll turn it over now. This is our regional coordinator. Um, and he was able to answer the questions and I'll also provide my information at the end. So <laughs> thank you. Sorry for my daughter in the background. <laughs> that was excellent, Antonia. That was wonderful. Hey, uh, Antonia, uh, you're from Texas. Whereabouts in Texas? Uh, El Paso, Texas. So my oh. parents were retired out of Fort Bliss. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I'm from South Texas, Port Arthur, on the other side of the state. 13 hour drive from you <laughs> in El Paso. But I, I really picked up when you said, "Learn, you know, never seen snow." Same. And then my first 
elective for PT, you know, for physical education was, yes, it was skiing there at uh, Victor Constant, same thing, small world. I love it. I love it. So, all right. So um, by chance, then maybe we'll roll straight over to Bob and allow Bob to have a quick discussion. Again, Bob's coming from the Naval Academy, has representation and does has helped out a lot of uh, students in the Western Slope as well. Bob and I met several years ago, one of our previous conferences. Bob, you want to you want to give a bit, a bit of a, an intro on your background and then run through some presentation that you would like? Uh, sure. Uh, again, uh, name's Bob uh, O'Rourke. I live in, in, in Ridgeway, Colorado, and I'm responsible for most of the high schools here in southwestern uh, Colorado, you know, from Montrose to Gunnison and then down Telluride, for example, in, in Ridgeway. Uh, and I graduated a thousand years ago in the class of 1967, was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps. Uh, my first assignment, uh, I, I got my first choice of assignments too, um, was it was in the Marine Corps. And uh, at that time, uh, you know, Vietnam was uh, in full cry. So I got my first, uh, my first uh, job, uh, job choice too, which was to be a rifle platoon leader in the, in the Marines. And so, they immediately shipped me to Vietnam, and I, I fought with the uh, with the First Marine Division as a rifle platoon leader. Uh, after that, I uh, I went to a flight school, and uh, and flew A4 Skyhawks. Uh, while I was in the Marine Corps, I had the opportunity for a uh, a postgraduate uh, degree on, on an Olmsted Fellowship, so I studied at the University of Heidelberg and got a master's degree. And uh, when I did get out of the Marine Corps, I went to business school, and uh, having the uh, the academy background. Uh, was really helpful in, in getting me into Harvard Business School. And so I got an MBA from Harvard and then went into the aerospace industry and had a career there for uh, 20 uh, years or so. I have two sons who are uh, in the service. One's in a former F-16 driver. He's a, uh, a, a captain for United Airlines right now. And the other uh, uh, son is, is older. He's a full colonel in the, in the Air Force and he's a special tactics uh, group commander uh, down at Hurlburt Field in in Florida, so a good military background, and 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 uh, Dwayne will appreciate this. I'm an Army brat too. I graduated from Munich American High School in Munich, Germany, in 1962, which was this, a, a phenomenal experience. And I'm glad that the Army is still over there in some manner, shape, or form. Uh, you know, there's a, a lot of similarities uh, among all of the service academies. And uh, a lot of which was was covered, you know, in the in, in the previous briefing in terms of admissions processes and things like this. Uh, a lot of very 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 similar, uh, as well as the academic uh, backgrounds uh, required. But I thought I'd, I'd, I'd do is, is differentiate a little bit. I, I will go through some slides, but uh, it, it really depends on what you know what a uh, a person sees themselves doing after after they graduate from uh, you know from. Uh, from one of the academies, uh, because there's uh, quite a bit of uh, difference among uh, among service assignments, but all the jobs are good, all the jobs are challenging, and you're going to get more responsibility as a graduate from one of the service academies uh, than you'll ever get, you know, as a uh, you know as as a, as a civilian. And and a couple of things that I, I want to clarify about the Naval Academy, because may, many people are surprised by this. Uh, you know, we graduate probably about 1,000, 1,100 uh, uh, officers uh, every year. And uh, about 75% about of the graduates go in the Navy. And the other 25% go in the Marine Corps. And so the, uh, uh, the Naval Academy is a, is a major source of officers for both the Navy as well as the Marine Corps. It used to be much less in the Marines, but now it's up to uh, 25%. And what's also interesting is the uh, the wide variety of job opportunities and, and career fields that you have within the Navy or the Marine Corps. For example, if uh, in, in the Navy, among the graduates, uh, about 33% of the Navy graduates actually go aboard ship as a surface warfare officer. And so that's the largest number of, of, uh, of, uh, of or category, I should say, but 30% go into aviation and become naval pilots. Uh, and about 6% are naval flight officers. Um, and so they might be in a, you know, a, an electronic warfare officer or something like this. Because the Navy has a, a rather substantial air arm uh, that's um, primarily sea-based, 
but they also have land-based aircraft uh, as well. Uh, so the, the Navy air arm is, uh, is pretty substantial. And we probably graduate as many pilots, almost as many as probably the Air Force. And of course the Army has a pretty, pretty large uh, aviation arm too. So if someone wished to be a, a flyer, all the service academies you know, really offer you the opportunity to become a, a military trained pilot. Um, interesting enough, 4% uh, of the graduating class go into Navy SEALs. Um, and some also go into uh, explosive ordnance disposal and whatnot. In the Marine Corps uh, graduates of the 25% that go in the Marine Corps, 62% go into the ground, ground combat arms. And of course that's infantry, uh, artillery, um, the Marine Corps is getting rid of its tanks, its heavy tanks, interestingly enough. And 35% of, of, the, of the Marines uh, go into aviation. So if you looked at the, the largest group of graduates from the Naval Academy, um, most of them, the largest group actually become pilots in either the Navy or the Marine Corps. And I think that's, you know, that's kind of, uh, you know, that's kind of interesting. Um, but now let me go through a couple of uh, a couple of charts. I'm seeing if I get the share screen to work for me here, and uh, I'll try to not be repetitive. Can everybody see that? Okay, I guess everybody can. I got a thumbs up there from Joseph. Is it? How you doing, Joseph? Okay, who are we? Uh, by the numbers here, you can see the student faculty ratio. Pretty impressive, eight to one with a 90% graduation rate, zero four-year tuition costs. This applies to all the service academies and 100% guaranteed employment when you graduate. Uh, the Naval Academy has 25, uh, 26 uh, uh, academic majors, less than uh, West Point, and I think it's probably less than uh, the Air Force uh, Academy as well. West Point's got a very broad uh, uh, list of academic majors. Uh, we're, we're located in Annapolis, Maryland, a pretty uh, nice uh, access to Baltimore and, and Washington, full services, and, and this, is, this applies to all the academies. Uh, the Brigade of Midshipmen is probably about the same size as, as West Point and, uh, and Air Force, uh, 4,500, uh, and they come from everywhere. And we'll go into, I'll go into some details on, on, on some of the backgrounds of the, of, of the class here in, uh, in, in a few minutes. Here's a good picture of the yard, uh, which we, we call it. You can see extensive uh, sailing facilities and phenomenal athletic facilities. Again, just like any, other, uh, any of the service academies. What, is, uh, what do we offer? This is uh, similar to the other ones. And it, a phenomenal education. We're also ranked up there with the West Point and, and Air Force. Uh, the, I mentioned the the majors. There's a core curriculum. It's part, you get a bachelor of science degree. So the core curriculum is essentially emphasizes uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. But you can also major in the humanitarian fields and and social sciences. And there's also, uh, as you can imagine, military science leadership uh, required courses that you're taking uh, every year. Uh, no small thing here is the pay, which is $1,150 a month. You don't actually see $1,150 a month in your wallet though, because they, they're gonna take out for various services uh, like barbershop, cleaning, laundry, and then you know, things like this uh, come, uh, you know, come, comes out of your pay, but it's a full scholarship. Uh, tuition room board meals, medical, dental coverage, and you are issued personal laptops, books, additional learning materials. In fact, you can walk into any one of the academies uh, completely uh, with, with nothing, and they will give you everything that you need down to toothpaste and toothbrushes. So everybody starts off, everybody starts off the same. Um, and then from the career perspective, Every summer, as in West Point, you get uh, you get a lot of summer training exposure to the fleet. You'll spend time on board ship. You'll spend time with the Marine Corps if you uh, are in, trending uh, towards the Marines. They'll they'll take you out there and, and show what the Marine Corps is uh, all about. You do have a five year service commitment, a minimum of five years service commitment. And uh, I mentioned the community pathways, surface warfare, aviation, special warfare. Submarines, I didn't mention subs, 
twenty percent of the graduating class go uh, go subs, and that's you know of course the first place they go after they graduate then is nuclear power school, and you go uh, go board subs, and that's a phenomenally interesting uh, career path, as you can imagine. They're the sneaky peats of the U.S. Navy, really. Uh, you know they're always underwater, and uh, anyway, uh, pretty outstanding uh, program. Let's see, majors 26, a lot, you'll see a lot of similarity between this and, and the other service academy, but it, it's gonna, it's gonna uh, have an emphasis in many areas on, on things that the Navy needs, naval architecture, marine engineering, ocean engineering. You'll also notice down here, robotics and control engineering, no small thing like that. Um, and um, math and science, but here on the humanities and social science, less than what, what West Point uh, offers, but you can in fact major in a language, Chinese and Arabic, but there are minors in all these languages uh, as, as well. So pretty broad, uh, pretty broad based uh, a program, primarily oriented, oriented towards science, technology, engineering, and math. Okay, athletics, Navy won their first game yesterday. Dwayne and I were just talking about that yesterday. They beat uh, the strong team from uh, University of Central Florida, but uh, participates in Division I uh, athletics. And of course, a big intramural uh, uh, program as well, as, as well as club sports. The application process, and this is uh, very similar to, uh, to West Point in terms of what is required and it's 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 strongly uh, advised to start in your junior year with preliminary application preliminary sats even to take the sats and acts if you can take them as much and as often as you can uh, and also you're, you're required to have recommendations uh, and they're looking for the same well-rounded uh, well-rounded students uh, not just your academic record, and I'll show you some more information on that in a sec, uh, but also extracurricular activities. And I'll, I'll read off some statistics to you in terms of uh, the kind of extracurricular activities that, that uh, uh, predominate you know, among uh, the class portrait. For example, the class of, uh, of 2024, in uh, terms of extracurricular activities, the leading one is varsity athletics. One percent of uh, of the uh, entering class uh, participate in varsity athletics. Ninety percent community services. Seventy three percent captain, co captain of sports team. Sixty seven percent national honor society. A sixty six percent student body leader. Sixty six percent dramatics, public speaking or debating. And then it goes goes on to list other ones such as uh, activities with the church groups, tutoring, work experience, musical activities. Interestingly enough. Um, and participation in things like drama, debating, things like this. I had a, I had a young lady who got, got, got accepted to the Naval Academy and um, uh, went on to become an intelligence officer in the Marine Corps. And we, we normally do an hour plus interview for each, uh, each qualified candidate. And it took about uh, an hour into the interview for her to finally admit that she actually uh, had uh, some poetry published. And I said, well, gee, uh, Vic, Vic, wh wh why didn't you tell me that uh, you know, earlier on? She said, well, I didn't think that the Academy would be interested at all in someone who had, uh, had, had you know, a background of poetry. I said, you know, the, the Academies, all the Academies are looking for uh, well-rounded people, but also what can contribute to the not just the naval service or the army or the Marine Corps, what can you contribute to the brigade of midshipmen or the Corps of Cadets? And so having that kind of a well-rounded background, you can contribute something rather unique. And so I put that down on her application. That's not why she got accepted. Of course, she had many other things, but the point being that, you know, you don't have to be, you know, a, uh, you, you, you don't just have to be a whiz kid in math. You're expected to be a you expect to be uh, able to do other things and, and be well-rounded. And from the standpoint of SAT scores in the 50th percentile, SAT verbal between uh, 600 and 760, SAT math 620 to 750, ACTs 27 to 34 in English, 27 to 34 scores in, uh, in math. 
So all the academies will accept your highest scores. So it's, it's worth your while to take them as often as, 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 as you need to, to get your scores up there and really prepare for those things. Uh, that's not the only thing they're going to look at, but that is kind of a truth teller when you're, when you're trying to uh, 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 rank people uh, competitively. Okay, enough on the SAT scores. Because of COVID and things like this, there's, there's still, there's, a, there's, there's a, you don't absolutely have to have it, but you have to have a reason for not taking it. And so they're flexible on that. Uh, and that's still the policy, certainly at the Naval Academy. And I, I don't know, maybe it's the same at West Point as well. Okay, admissions process. This again, it gives you a, 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 a broad sweep. How many people actually fill out an application? About 16,000, you know, for the Naval Academy. And of the 16,000, they went down to about 12,000 who they will, they'll declare to be an official candidate who will then go on for the, uh, for the remainder of the, of the application process and the interview. And you've got to go through admissions board. You've got to be physically, medically, and uh, qualified. You have to be triple qualified. And, you know, so academics, physical, and medical. And you have to obtain a, a nomination. Very similar. The same thing, essentially, as West Point. Same sources as this at West Point. And so you go through that kind of a screening uh, process, and then you have the opportunity to compete for an appointment to the academy. So it's a nomination qualification process, and then there's compete for an appointment. And from the 16,000 original applications, the eligible to compete is down to 3,400. Okay. So you can see they, they, uh, they neck that down pretty fast. And I need to emphasize the, uh, uh, the process that they go through. Each candidate is looked at by, a, by an admissions board, and they look at you very, very carefully, and you are looked at rather uniquely. It's not just, well, this is a cutoff, SATs will accept these, we won't accept those. They're going to look at everyone who's a qualified candidate. It's quite an impressive uh, uh, admissions process, and West Point's no, no different. Out of those 3,400, it'll be about 1,100, which will get an offer of, of, of a fully qualified offer of, of, of appointment. And they'll come through the Academy Prep School, the foundation program or what have you. So here's advice for admissions, strong foundation in math and science, all the way through calculus, chemistry and physics with the lab. And those two are, are, uh, are pretty key. There's no minimum GPA. But you need to really look to be at, at the best you possibly can and, and stand in the upper 20% of your class. Send all your scores in. And if you can take AP, honors, uh, international baccalaureate courses, take those as well. Again, just like West Point, you know, well-rounded, demonstrated leadership potential. That could be clubs, that could be athletics, that could be, but demonstrated athlete, uh, leadership potential in active and athletic and, and non-athletic. Uh, so top reasons to go Navy, but these are the top reasons to go to any of the academies. Full scholarship, guaranteed employment, location. Uh, I've been to West Point many, many times. Beautiful location. Annapolis is a gorgeous location. West Point in the wintertime is a little bit gray. I realize that. <laughs> Leadership, character development, and 90% graduation rate. And here's some uh, uh, information. The, the Naval Academy website is usna.edu, or just Google the Naval Academy, and the website has got uh, exhaustive information on, uh, on, on the courses and, and what have you. So I wanted to get through this thing as, as fast as I can and give you opportunities to ask any questions that probably took a lot longer than I wanted to. But anyway, that concludes what I have to say. All good. All good. Super great. Yeah. So we've had two wonderful uh, presentations there. I'm sure that you guys can see internal similarities, but also some points of uh, differentiation, which I think is is wonderful. And it's also obviously somewhat mission oriented to the, the various services provided for our country. Uh, and Bob, uh, Olmstead Scholar, congratulations. My brother-in-law is the, the uh, CEO of the Olmstead Foundation, Bruce Scott. Oh. Uh, uh, Br yeah, Major General retired Bruce Scott. Uh, he was my first battalion commander in Germany, and and I love the fact you also went to HBS. What year did you graduate HBS? 
1982, and I went right. to work for uh, Hughes Aircraft Company. Cool. I was 97. Great company. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and again, th those opportunities come from this particular pathway. I know that I would not have been able to do that just straight out of Port mm -hmm. Arthur. And so... Um, I, let me ask this. I'm going to do a little ice break. I, I, obviously, we got Joseph. Joseph, I recognize, right? Joseph Clark there. He's a, aren't you a high school senior there at Aspen, correct? Yeah. And we got Amber, who's a freshman. And I admire, Amber, Amber you are so perfectly dialed in to gain this information. And you're, you know, you're doing the right thing by uh, exploring. So um, maybe, I'll, Antonia, I'm going to ask you, as a quick question that might be helpful for both the senior and the freshman, you know, what was the one thing that you would have wanted to remember or thought about or, or darn it, I wish I had thought, you know, kind of focused on that as a high schooler prior to going into a service academy? What can we, we can we start with that and then we'll turn over to these two? Okay, sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to answer. So I think, um, let's see. Coming as a high schooler, a little, little while ago now. Right. Uh, personally, I think um, I would have, uh, so I was more on the nerd side, <laughs> kind of coming in from high school. Um, so just kind of preparing myself more physically, maybe um, coming to West Point. Uh, there's a lot of hills, uh, if you're not familiar yeah. with hills and running. Um, so just kind of getting myself maybe in a little better shape and kind of uh, running and getting more physically act, uh, active kind of beforehand. Um, just kind of mentally preparing yeah that's awesome and you're right I, I, when you said the word hills it kind of had a bit of a cold <laughs> streak go down my back and my spine for sure <laughs> right well super okay so th I think that's helpful right it's kind of making sure the well-rounded uh, candidate and Joseph and Amber you guys thinking about that taking some good notes any questions that you guys may have for either of the presenters Joseph you want to unmute yeah so I had two questions just kind of specifically for aviation so first, how did you um, like choose to go from um, like being like just, I think, what was it a platoon commander? Or, um, and what was the transfer like to go into flight school from that as opposed to going into flight school from the academy? And then with the academy, like what specific majors are good for getting into flight school? And what's that process like? The, um, that's a great question because when I went in the Marine Corps initially, it was uh, predominantly with a focus on, on the infantry, although we all had an exposure at the Naval Academy to uh, one summer we spent, uh, you know, just totally focused on aviation. That was between our, our sophomore and our junior year. So we had the opportunity to go to Pensacola and, uh, and fly in the, in the trainers. And we also had a chance to fly some jets and what, what have you. So I, I kind of had that in the background. And I think what what convinced me to uh, to fly is that uh, when I was uh, when I was in combat as a rifle platoon leader, uh, I had the opportunity to call in close air support uh, quite frequently. And in Marine Corps, close air support means very close air support. And I was impressed by the responsiveness and the accuracy of uh, of the pilots. And most of the aircraft we had supporting us were A4 Skyhawks, a single seat, a single engine a jet. And so uh, I, I got wounded a couple of times over there and uh, I thought about it and said, you know, I, I've met some pilots in the, in the hospital and this is, this is supposed to be humorous. All the pilots uh, had a smile on their face. They had more money than I did and they, they seemed to have the prettiest girls. And so, uh, not plus my 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 experience in working with aviation the convinced me said, hey you know maybe I ought to go to flight school if I'm physically fit after all this and and so I did and it turned out to be all true and I love I love flying I still fly as a, uh, a search and rescue pilot in the Civil Air Patrol here in Colorado out in the Montrose Squadron in fact I'm a squadron commander and so I found a new adventure so to speak and fell in love with flying. Uh, from the standpoint of preparation, academic preparation for it, uh, we had people from all sorts of backgrounds uh, who went to flight school. You don't have to be a, an engineering major to go to flight school. You have to be technically proficient 
and you have to be able to learn fast. You have to be, uh, you know, be, you know, be, be, be pretty well coordinated and have good eyesight. But uh, there, there was no such, not, nothing special academically. However, if in fact you want to really ex have an expansive, very expansive aviation career at any one of the service academies, aeronautical engineering, I think if I had to do all over again, I would probably have, made, have, have taken a minor. We didn't have majors back then in aeronautical engineering so that I would have then the opportunity uh, to go to test pilot school and get into uh, uh, the, the engineering operational test and evaluation of, uh, of, of aircraft in the, in, the, uh, in, in the Marine Corps. That's what I, I would have done, but I was quite happy with what I did do. So does that answer your question? Totally, thank you. Okay. <laughs> And Amber, what questions might you have for the two presenters here to help kind of further? Yeah. So I play two to three sports in a year. How many sports do like cadets usually play? And uh, Antonia, do you want to handle that one? Yeah, yeah. I can. So I. Uh, Typically, you'll play probably one sport because um, it'll take up a significant amount of your time, especially if you're playing um, any kind of varsity kind of uh, collegiate level sports. Um, that'll take up a significant chunk of your time. You may be able to do two if they're kind of different seasons, um, but uh, you'll see probably your time is being pulled kind of a lot of different directions as it is. Um, so you'll probably stick to one that's your favorite or that you're really good at. Um, and go with that one. But I would say I've known plenty of people who have switched sports, uh, who came in playing one sport, switched to another. Um, there's also, um, I think as Bob mentioned, there's intramural sports. Um, so there's a few different things you can play there um, and you can switch out there between seasons, between years and try a lot of new things. So if there's a certain sport that uh, really kind of captures your passion, um, you definitely have the chance to pursue it and probably kind of make that your, your full-time sport. That's a good question as well. It, it, we still have a few minutes left here in our in our window. If there's other questions or other you know you know explorations you might want to have, I see Kenton Cower. I think that's another. I believe that's a, a Aspen High School attendee there. Oh, there's Kenton. Hi, good to see you, Kenton. What grade are you in? Uh, twelfth. You're a senior as well. Good. Excellent. Yeah. Any, you know, we're at the tail end here. Um, don't be shy if, if anyone has a final question. That's why we're here with uh, both Bob and uh, Antonia. Anyone? Okay. Uh, uh, I have, no, I don't. Oh, okay, go ahead, Antonia. I have one note, um, just for uh, particularly for Amber, but um, as you're kind of looking at your options and things, I would encourage you to look at the summer leader seminar, uh, which is an opportunity. Um, after your junior year, I believe, to go and spend a few weeks at one of the academies. I think it's one week, actually, but each of the academies has a program and you get to spend a week and kind of see what life is like, um, you know, there in, in cadet life. And uh, I participated myself, I actually went to the Air Force Academy Summer Leader Seminar, um, which was a blast uh, and really kind of helped me put things in perspective. So I would encourage you to look into that program. That's a great just point. Just so if, if I can add yeah. add to that, you know, yeah. uh, certainly the you know the summer seminar, uh, which is offered between junior and senior year, but even prior to that, you know, for next summer, for example, and, and I think the academies are probably the same here. They offer a summer STEM program, so you can go go and visit the academy, spend you know a week or so there, and you're actually going to be working in in the uh, pretty impressive laboratories and and doing the science technology engineering math kind of uh, projects but it gives you the opportunity to see what life is is like to a certain degree uh at the academy and and so this is a an opportunity to become familiar with it at, 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 at least it's different from the summer seminar the summer seminar uh, that happens between your junior and senior year is to give you a glimpse of what life is really like as a, uh, in the case of the Naval Academy, a midshipman. Uh, and they don't try to paint a, a rosy picture of it either. They want you to understand this is a military school. It's uh, pretty disciplined, very highly structured. 
and they want you to understand that and it also gives them an opportunity to kind of evaluate you a little bit too as you evaluate the academy so the summer program uh, the summer programs plural is uh, is an outstanding way to uh, to get familiar with the academies and try my i think at a, a candidate once who went to both an air force summer program and, a, and, a, and a naval academy summer program and they, they were very different excellent <laughs> excellent stuff canton did you not have a sister recently graduate from the Air Force Academy? Uh, yes, I did. Tell us about that. Um, well, she, she's in Florida right now. I think at Edwards, uh, some base in Florida, and she's working on navigation. So she'll be uh, basically navigating, I think, basic uh jumbo jets yeah and she graduated is it now about 30 uh, about a year and a half ago may of 20 yes. may of 20 yeah she was joseph you may remember she was a um i think um class of 16 from aspen high school mm -hmm. right yeah um, and that's really a great data point there if you think about our Western Slope, Bob and 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 now Antonia, super happy uh, was part of the team here to try to increase awareness uh, and and knowledge because it's not necessarily that well known out here and and the pathway is is phenomenal. Um, Joseph, you're a senior. What is your focus? Is there a particular academy that you have a, a focus on? Yeah, so I've done the, uh, both the preliminary applications for the Air Force and the Naval Academy. So okay. hopefully those two, yeah. Excellent. And again, Amber, I'm 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 saluting you and I'm I'm really, really jazzed that you're doing this. And I hope you can spread the word. You're you're getting in early and you you're and it's that's really important to help build the process. It's it takes a while, frankly, to complete the journey for uh, admission. Um, it's not just a one and done thing. It's it's comprehensive. And I think we got a great presentation from both Antonia and, and Bob on that point, as well as several other great points. Uh, I think we need to wrap. Uh, and I and I really appreciate everyone's attendance. I definitely appreciate Bob and Antonia's presentation. I, and Antonia, you and I, I think we'll be together again at um, at one o'clock. Is it one? Yeah. Yep. And Bob, and Bob, you have uh, a replacement. Laura Bush will be coming in in your, in your stead. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Super. And she, yeah, and actually, I've been I've been on just listening in. This is oh. sorry, and uh, just to let these young you know folks know, I'm I live in Grand Junction, so I'm you know Bob's cohort, a blue and gold officer for the Naval Academy, uh, and I did. We just recently had some uh, people step down or retire, but uh, I do now have the Aspen School. So just to let you folks know, I do live in Grand Junction, but I work up in Snowmass Village. Like, couple of days a week um, wow. actually interviewing a young man tomorrow evening from Aspen High School for the Naval Academy so you know please reach out because I am up there a couple of days a week usually um, if you want to if you have any more questions or want to get together or anything so that's great yeah. that's super great two days a week up in Stomas that's like going, that's a regular that's wonderful it's not bad right? yeah, that's, if, yeah. <laughs> I love it nice place to work so yeah what, right, what good year? to see you Laura yeah, Laura, what year were you from the Naval Academy? So I graduated in 1989 from the Naval Academy. All right. Um, I graduated from Grand Junction High School when, yeah. and I was a surface warfare officer in the Navy. And uh, I've been back here for quite a while. So, but um, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Reach out and get through Bob or get my contact information. And I probably already have, if you're already in there, Joseph, probably already have your yeah as well. So. Well, good stuff. And in fact, if anyone wants to come and obviously participate again at one o'clock or tell some friends and, and appoint them their, our way, obviously you can tap into the Zoom through the, uh, the College Fair network of uh, workshops. And again, thanks everyone. Have a, have a great rest of your day. And Laura and Antonia, we'll see each other right around one. All right. right. All right. Thanks. thanks. See great. you. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, thanks a lot, Dwayne. We'll see you later. Well done. Well done. Thank you, Thank you so much. Well done. Bye-bye.